Yay. Yay. Nice. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Right now, I am Ellie. This is Ella, Doa, and Lena. And we are in the printmaking department uh, workshop space at the Academy of Fine Arts Helsinki in Finland. And today we're going to be talking about all things masters related. A lot of admissions, student life, what's it like to study at this university. But before we get into that part of the conversation, let's introduce ourselves and say who we are. So I can start. My name is Ellie. I'm originally from Australia and I'm a third year bachelor student here at Kuva. I have a really science art based practice with interest into plants, clouds and rocks. And yeah. Who are you? Hi, I'm Ella Antila. Uh, I'm working here at the University of the Fine Arts. Um, I'm the planning officer of the student admissions and I'm here to answer all the questions regarding the um, next next um, autumn's admissions. Yeah. Mm. Uh, my name is Leonard. Um, I'm a Dutch mixed media artist coming from the Netherlands. Uh, I'm studying in the second year of my master's in sculpture department. Uh, yeah, I will talk further about other things. Yeah. And I'm Doa. I'm from Time and Space, uh, second year master's student. Uh, I come from Turkey, and this has been my first time in an art academy. Um, yeah. Yeah, cool. Thank you so much. And it's so nice to be here with you all. I'm really excited. Um, so, Ella, hmm. <laughs> uh, we've had a lot of questions about admissions. Yeah. I don't know anything about master's admissions. So yeah. can you give us a little run through, yeah. a little overview? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So maybe the most important thing is um, the application period. Um, it starts next August um, on the 9th. 9th of August and it goes on for two weeks. So you have two weeks time to apply. Um, so the um, application period ends on the 23rd of August at 3 p.m. So local time, 3 p.m. Finnish time, yeah. Um, you can get plenty of information um, from our website. So please go to the um, UniArts website there is all the information you need so I'm just giving you a kind of overview and of course if you have any questions I will answer them as well. Um, everything will be done remotely during the admission process so you don't have to come to the academy at all during the um, application process. Um, and there are two phases. So the first phase is um, to fill, of course, the application form. So um, you can do it um, in study info. And um, you have to fill in some um, needed documents and some um, required mat uh, materials as well. So um, you need a doc document uh, demonstrating your educational background, um, also a document where you can prove your um, language proficiency, and then you need some materials. Um, you need um, a study proposal, CV, and also maybe the most important one, a work portfolio. So those are the um, documents you need to fill in in the application form. Yeah, and after that, um, we here at the Academy will check the applicant's eligibility to apply. And if the applicant is eligible to apply, um, the admission jury will start working and um, they will go through all the eligible um, applicants. Yeah. And if, if you're um, go going to be chosen to the second phase, it will be an interview. Um, held remotely as well. Yeah. Yeah. Super interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Before we continue, I forgot to say to our viewers, if you have any questions along the way, just write them in the in the we already have a question. Already have the first question. Okay. 
uh, can we apply it in the printmaking course? So the question is, can we apply in the printmaking course? Well, first you have to get into the, <laughs> to the academy mm -hmm. and um, actually already during the application period, you're applying to one of the four study areas. Mm -hmm. So after you've been um, chosen to the academy, I think you can apply to plenty of courses. Yeah. 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 Nice. So thank you for that question. Any other questions, just write them in the chat and we'll answer along the way. So that was quite an admission process. How was that process for you? How did it go? Nervous and start? exciting, I yeah. guess. Yeah. That, that, it's just, yeah, you said. No, yeah. you, oh, how, yeah. how was your feeling? Oh, yeah. A bit the same. Yeah. yeah. It was, uh, especially because it's always sort of, you never know if you're chosen to be accepted or not but uh, especially for me it was the quite uh, difficult to sort of merge all your things you want in a, I think it was one A4 page uh, motivation letter mm -hmm. and then sort of really briefly tell uh, but as well very like uh, uh, try to sort of say everything in that, uh, in that small page and it's possible definitely but uh, yeah definitely I had to sort of merge everything to the most important things but that's the letter, and then uh, eventually, if you get chosen, you get an interview, um, which was quite quite a good interview. I expected actually a bit more deeper questions about personal practice, but uh, it was quite sort of basic questions um, as well. What was sort of asked in the, the letter? Uh, that was two years ago. I, I don't know if it still depends maybe on the teacher as well, who, yeah. who's in the department. For example, with sculpture, for me, uh, there were two teachers one professor, one teacher, and they, uh, they asked the questions. Yeah, but uh, I don't know how, how was that in time and space, it was different. Mm. I was also interviewed by one professor and one teacher, mm. and yeah, questions were quite simple, and the most significant question I even remember now was, with which work you want to continue? Which work would you choose from your portfolio to continue more mm -hmm. on your master's? Um, but yeah, the, um, their uh, attitude was more to understand me, not like forcing you to tell or do something with your questions, but like more appreciating and then um, in a calm way. Mm. Mm. Super nice. Um, sorry, just to interrupt quickly, there won't be a motivation letter this mm. year. Um, the motivation letter is this year a study plan. So it might change every every year a bit, like the um, application instructions. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Yeah. Let's take this question. Two questions. Yeah. So the first one is, what qualities does the academy look for in students, in application, and in portfolios? Mm -hmm. second Wait, let's, the, maybe let's take the one at a time. <laughs> yeah. I don't have that much in memory. So the question was, what... Um, what features and aspects does the university look for in applicants? Mm. Yeah. Well, that's actually a really hard question. And the admission jury, of course, does the work mm. um, when they go through the applications. But of course, uh, you can always go to the um, <laughs> admission criteria. Yeah, that's the word in English. Um, and yeah. there are all the points like what mm -hmm. what are um, the searched um, elements yeah. yeah yeah and I think this can lead on to my next question do you have any tips for applicants for making the application the admission process the portfolio the interview mm -hmm. yeah. probably um, yeah as well coming back to, to the first question maybe the merge um, I think that what they're as well looking also always for sort of your plans, I think maybe instead of a motivation letter, but a study plan. It's, yes. Uh, I think uh, I think really important that you sort of for yourself know like, hey, what what would I gain from such a master? Mm -hmm. uh, why that apartment specifically? Um, and of course, I think if you have to show your portfolio and choose specific works or whichever you want to show, that, that sort of adds up to what you write in your study plan. That you sort of that's, co that's coherent together in logic, like hey, I want to progress this, yeah. this specific aspects I really enjoy, uh, 
and I would want to sort of explore that further here. So it doesn't need to, what I sometimes feel with applications, it needs to be sort of perfect. Or that I think it's more maybe a good a good requirement is like, hey, seeing for yourself where you would want to, uh, where you still sort of lack or want to learn more uh, mm -hmm. about instead of like already know it. And uh, yeah, I think that's. In addition to what you, you just said, like maybe being sincere with what you are looking for mm -hmm. could be a tip while mm -hmm. planning the study plan or writing it, the motivation. But you said there will yeah. be a motivation letter, but yeah. I mean, you don't need to know beforehand, but what you are looking for, mm -hmm. what you are seeking for, mm -hmm. writing this might be. Yeah. Yeah. And I think just putting your true self and your whole self and giving it all back. Yeah. yeah. What, what was the next question? In your paper, a specific art style or art students free to do whatever style of theme mm -hmm. and to what type of work study it. Yeah. Okay. And before you asking that question, can I just one give one more tip? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Last having week. yeah, <laughs> having another gaze to your portfolio or your uh, study plan might be useful. Like asking your friends their comments mm -hmm. on your portfolio or your study plan. This could even be your mom mm -hmm. that you're asking, like a strange gaze to yeah. check mm -hmm. what you've been mm -hmm. doing. I know. Yeah. yeah, that was a good point because the academy cannot answer any questions regarding the portfolio. We get those every year. Mm -hmm. Like, can you please give me some comments about my portfolio? How mm -hmm. could I, can I do something better? But we cannot answer those questions. Yeah. 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 So the next question, if I remember properly, is <laughs> <question>. <laughs> kind of how specific is are the departments and how much a student can diversify? in their practice and also what the four departments are so there's printmaking time and space sculpture and painting mm -hmm. and how specific or broad are these yeah departments? what i as well got from that question like what well, in the application what what specific style or uh, that yeah. was asked as well right like yeah. uh, maybe on that yeah, think, what specific yeah. artistic style is looked for? That's a difficult for. question. Uh, yeah. yeah. Maybe I will not be eligible to uh, answer that question, but uh, look, checking Kuvan Kevat might be useful. Mm. Then you will see how various mm. ways of artists have been spreading through. Mm. Um, because I, I was somehow like working um, intersubjective, like with people, but my friend studio mate was working in forest and the other studio mate was uh, working in between performance, dance and a sculpture. So there are many different ways people are uh, working on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kuvan Kevat. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, Kuvan Kevat, maybe, yeah, yeah, we see sort of as well um, because it, every, every student has been progressed as well with a lot of studio visits and talks with teachers mm -hmm. with as well beyond uh, the academy. But uh, yeah, I think, I think for like, if it's a certain style, that's always depending on the teacher itself. Uh, for me, uh, I, I followed the master in sculpture um, and they have certain teachers and professors and they, of course, they have their taste and preference as well. And of course you hope as well that they go beyond their taste and look as well uh, on your own uh, strength instead of only what they like. Um, but of course it's, uh, they have to teach you. So this as well, like, hey, can the teachers give give exactly what you want? Uh, I think that's where a bit what they're looking for. So there's no clear answer, I think, on mm. what certain style should you have. It's I think it's good to indeed look to go think of that. It's really uh, yeah. it's a good question. Yeah. And I personally feel that the school really appreciates quite mixed media and diverse diverse mixed happenings and like I've never really painted or drawn and everything I do is quite different or even sometimes outside of art so mm. I think that's really appreciated here thank you for all these questions yeah. what's the next one yeah well, uh, so the question is what is the study culture of the academy it's a both questions so. yeah mm. but I may say self-disciplined way of studying mm. is quite the main uh, culture here yeah mm. Mm. you need to decide 
with whom you want to have the studio visits, you need to decide uh, which course you want to take. Mm -hmm. uh, you are leading your own study plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a bit of a funny thing here at school, uh, at, the, at the academy. That is, uh, at least in my experience, quite different than what than I'm used in the Netherlands or in England or, or somewhere else. What I know from how the structure is here, it's, uh, you're quite on yourself. You're sort of quite individual. You have to, um, it's not an academy where you, for example, apply to the, to the sculpture masters. Uh, and you follow all the same courses as the, as the, as the, as the same year of, of, of sculpture. So everybody chooses their own courses, whichever they want and whatever fits. Um, so everybody leads their own path, um, which is uh, usually as well crossover with, for example, time and space or brim making or painting. Um, and that's where you get to learn other students as well from other departments, uh, but as well from a lot from the bachelors that's as well makes it super not divided, uh, which is really interesting because then you have these sort of crossovers uh, where you can learn from each other. Uh, instead of super divided. Mm. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's uh, for me quite uh, the culture here. So there's not like one fixed uh, class that's only doing everything and I don't know, as well outside academy doing things on their own. Um, but it's eventually if you study here, uh, it gets maybe a bit slower because you're sort of not super mm. in one group. But uh, that makes it as well really interesting to see more people yeah definitely so that's for me at least the feeling of a bit of the culture yeah 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 i really agree with this self-discipline and and choosing your own path i also wanted to add with the study sculpture in this university it's very very non-competitive mm. and oh, yeah. even for example when we have our grading for a course for example there's only pass and fail mm -hmm. there's no ranking which I think really generates a different mm. a different study culture. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Another question. Next question. Uh, do you have some examples of the elective studies from Opinto Opus? Do we have some examples of the elective studies from Opinto Opus? Yeah, Opinto Opus is study guide study in guide. English, and yeah. you can also find it online. So, yeah. for example, if you're doing your study plan, you can go through the study guide as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a really good way to see the university. Mm -hmm. What What is meant by elective studies? I don't know. Because <laughs> yeah. I feel like nearly all of them are elective yeah. studies. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But still, I think there are some mandatory courses yeah. In the yeah. sense that you need to fulfill eight credits for artistic mm. independent work and then five for thematic courses. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. But those are also in under study path. Model, yes. Mm, which yes. also could be fine on yeah. web page or? Mm. Yeah, I think so. I mm. found it online as well. Okay. Yeah. Like this uh, mandatory yeah. programs as well. And every semester there's like four, four times a half a year. Mm -hmm. um, and then there sort of as well which best to follow in that semester and which mm -hmm. best to follow, like mandatory and the rest of that. Mm -hmm. uh, what sort of on your own, like what would you want to choose next to that? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I don't know about elective studies, but um, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I think I'll add to this that there's also possibilities to do courses at Theatre Academy and Sibelius Academy. Mm -hmm. There's these um Cross academy courses, so courses are opened up to students of the other academies. Mm -hmm. um, and then here at this university, we also have the opportunity to study at other universities. So I've done some science courses at the University of Helsinki, mm -hmm. which I feel is quite elective study. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. And we also have the open campus at the academy. So yeah. there are also some summer courses, for example. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. Okay. What shall we talk about next? Maybe maybe we should talk about some challenges. Just mm -hmm. so not everything is like really happy. What's been really hard? What's been challenges of, okay. of studying at university? I jumped into this uh, self-disciplined way of culture here, but this was at the same time so challenging for me mm -hmm. because I'm coming from a... Mm, University culture, somehow everything is arranged for the student, like there are uh, certain structures that you need to fit in. Mm. But then it was somehow all 
all of a sudden my will to choose which direction I really want to discover. Mm -hmm. um, mm. yeah, for me, it's exactly the same. Like you have so many responsibility of your own. Uh, and then that is, I'm not used to that as well. You have a fixed program and you follow that program like everybody else in that year. Here you really have to choose it yourself. Uh, for me, that was as well challenging because nobody would say to you like, hey, I wouldn't take that for you, or you should take this. Why didn't you take this? Mm -hmm. Sort of, you're you are your own guide. You have to, and of course, you can ask for guidance, uh, and as well from the teachers, like, hey, is there any course on this? They will help you with it. Um, but you have to do it on your own, and sometimes it's uh, you can wonder, like, oh, did I do the, uh, did I take the right courses or the, the right path? For me, as well, was challenging that uh, the mandatory courses sometimes. Uh, overlaps a bit, mm. uh, so uh, because there's so many courses and so many, uh, which is nice, a lot of freedom, mm. but uh, freedom can sometimes be occupying uh, a bit. Like a bit, uh, you have to schedule it yourself quite a lot. Like if it uh, fits, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we have such limited time. Only two years for the masters. Yeah, yeah you have to plan it. <laughs> I kept thinking, why I didn't start it from bachelor's. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, more years yeah. Yeah. to have more years yeah. mm. and I wanted to ask Dora you said that um, we were chatting before and mm. you mentioned that you studied before this philosophy mm. how is that going from philosophy to art there were many new concepts for me like studio visits it took maybe three months for me to understand that concept <laughs> that um, uh should I just elaborate on this or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. But no, I couldn't elaborate more. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Um, but what else did I say? Mm. I just, yeah, it's just interesting having like such a different background because like, mm. like not going from bachelor's to master's, but just straight into master's of art with a different background. And then it was yeah. like advantages to bring some other uh, mm -hmm. methods or way of thinking or approaches to mm -hmm. arts field as you also said that that like yeah. you've been taking many courses from university of Helsinki science courses yeah so this structure somehow like opens up you to mix different or work interdisciplinary or cross-disciplinary in a way mm -hmm. um cool okay i'm gonna move on to a different kind of topic area. So we're all from different departments. Uh, can you tell a bit about the spaces and facilities in your departments? Uh, yeah, I can say something about, for example, sculpture. Um, well, for, for example, the, if you would take courses or sign up for courses, that's, that's quite, you can overlap and you can as well choose um, uh, courses from like other departments. Uh, and of course, sculpture students have a little bit more priority than, uh, for example, time and space students in sculpture mm -hmm. courses. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think as well for the, the facilities uh, in sculpture, you have mainly on the bottom floor, uh, where you have a lot of like uh, workspaces for metal, wood, uh, ceramics, um, and more. Uh, so in that case, there's, there's a lot of space for that, and I think it's still possible for if you are a time and space student or painting or printmaking, you can as well uh, participate and work there. Uh, but you have to follow, like in the beginning, a small course to get to know the equipment and, uh, and eventually get the, the access to the key that you go and after the course can uh, visit the workshop yourself. Mm -hmm. So in that case, it's I think it's always possible to work elsewhere. Um, yeah, for me the facilities are really great. Yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of machines. Uh, painting rooms, so there's a lot of like uh, good courses that help you what, what room will be good as well for like air conditioning if it's like quite chemical or mm. exp doing experiments. Yeah, so there's a lot to, in my, my experience, a lot to uh, discover. Yeah. 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 And in time and space, you mainly have this, uh, your own studio that you share with other students. And then regarding facilities, there is a video studio, photography studio, and um, some multimedia studios as well, which uh, involves this VR um, glasses and VR working options. 
Um, we have 3D scanner, even a hologos, if I'm pronouncing correct. Um, and full of MacBook Studio that mm. you can video edit. And also, I guess there's a Windows Studio as well, mm. um, which I wasn't using quite often. But, um, mm -hmm. uh, or did you maybe mention the Fab Lab? The, oh, yeah, uh, no, I didn't mention. Yeah, because um, there's like, I don't know how many, like I think three 3D computers uh, and as well a uh, laser cutter. Um, and, and 3D there's, printers, uh, you mean? 3D printers, yeah, yeah sorry, yeah. Um, and many equipment around that, so there's a lot of like... Uh, um, and also if you want, because there's sometimes at Alto, for example, there's as well uh, some uh, machines, you can as well make... Um, through the system, make some appointments if you would really want to sort of go beyond things that we don't do not have here. So there's always options to, yeah. If you know what you want, then you can always think of how 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 you can sort of manage it together. Yeah. 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 Well, I think it's like so amazing all of the things we have in the university. Mm. We're so privileged, and it's like a toy store or something. Mm. It's incredible, <laughs> like infinite <laughs> possibilities. Yeah, I'll just mention quickly about the printmaking department. There's um, screen printing and etching and woodcut and all kinds of printmaking techniques and bookbinding and a letterpress and paper making room and lithography and another beautiful paper room. And then in painting, they have like this alchemy space. Have you seen it? There's like all of these pigments in jars oh, and they I make their own paints. Yeah, it's really cool. Well, yeah, really magical space. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my next question that I'd like to ask, which I think is maybe difficult to answer, but what has the pedagogical methods of the teachers been like? Mm. What's your te learning mm. experience, teaching experience? Mm. We were talking about this a little bit before we started yeah. this, and you just mentioned that when you are the receiver, it's so hard to address which pedagogical method they are actually using. Yeah. But I may briefly say that it is quite like um, supportive. Um, I, I've been hearing from my friends that their uh, professors have been so critical um, or if there are some repetition in their works regarding historical history, then they've been always um, suggesting them to go back to uh, historical things or like other artists' doings and then come back to your own work, kind of. Um, but here, what you are dealing with, they are supporting you in a way, um, mm. letting you to go in more, and experience more, kind of. Mm. Mm. Yeah, th as well, this, uh, for, for me, at least in my experience, uh, it's what I know from sculpture department. Um, every teacher is different, and that's uh, as well nice that you have your own freedom. Uh, I think in the beginning, you have maybe a lot more studio visits, uh, depending on how much studio visits you want, maybe eventually you're overloaded, but um, I think you eventually choose like, hey, who do I want to invite back because I like the studio visits? And in that case, the freedom is quite nice that you sort of can uh, choose what sort of feedback you like. Maybe sometimes for some people, feedback is quite nice if, if there's only questions being asked. It really depends on the teacher, what I'm trying to say. Um, for me, eventually I chose certain teachers which I... Um, felt they knew what it, where I was going going to be heading in my work, uh, and yeah, I think as well uh, in your masters you have to in your second year going towards Kuv and Kuvat, the, the graduation show, uh, which is one and a half year after you start. Uh, just it's just uh, the show is just over, um, and you have to choose your supervisors, and then you have I think two or or one, one or two I think. I don't know. Uh, two or three, like one okay. supposed to be from the university and two external options. At right. least one external you, you okay. could have, but you may choose two. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, that, um, for me, at least the, the supervisors were really interesting. Uh, you can choose those as well yourself. Uh, and there's a list where the school can help you as well find if you're not so familiar in, uh, in Finland. For me, uh, that was the case. Uh, and then you could sort of search, like, hey, what well, do I already know? Well, could I ask for my supervision? Vision? And then you have certain hours where you can really ask guidance. Uh, yeah. 
for me, that was really, uh, really interesting. Yeah. To, uh, yeah. Visit. yeah. We also choose our examiners, which is, I think, quite interesting. Like, maybe in many universities, it, it is like that. I'm not quite sure, but um, to be examined, like asking from whom you want to be examined is quite um, important regarding what kind of uh, criteria, through which kind of criteria you want to be examined and how you want to develop yourself after graduating, kind of. Um, it is nourishing. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Yeah. Even that you get to choose indeed. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, another question. What do usual students do after graduation and what are you doing? I was actually just going to ask about this. So the question, question is, what are you going to do after graduation and how you feel about this? And I wanted to make this a two-part question and also ask kind of a bit of an overview. How has the school formed you and influenced you? And yeah, like has it helped you to become an artist? Hmm. And then how does this look into the future? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for, for me at least, yeah, I cannot say um, uh, how it is after the school because it's, I'm still studying. Mm -hmm. But um, what I've heard is uh, as well what is really interesting that the school, the, the academy has some relations as well outside of Finland for residencies or mm -hmm. exhibitions or certain institutions. Um, I think especially for people that graduate and are like um, uh, anyone that sort of extend their practice and um, beyond academy, um, they have more chance to sort of get in those residencies or programs or institutions, which is for me, yeah, that's at least my plan, what I'm going to do. Um, because, uh, yeah, I'm coming from the Netherlands um, and for now I'm sort of not planning to go back because there's so many opportunities here as well f from the academy um, that at first I'm going to see how that works out. Yeah, I don't know if I merge other questions what did you ask more and yeah and I also asked how has the you know how has this past one and a half years formed you or influenced you mm -hmm. yeah as well maybe a bit relating to what uh, what I explained before um, what I've seen in art, other art academies sometimes you sort of really merge into sort of the product uh, as well usually of a teacher here I feel it's quite free more sort of your own path mm -hmm. so in that case uh, the teaching is not super dominant on that the aesthetics of the teacher is sort of copied or like wanted. And for me, that was really good. Uh, for me, uh, that's exactly what I wanted. Um, to get sort of the best version of myself instead of a version of the teacher uh, combined with myself. So for me, that's a bit my experience, uh, how the process went. Yeah. Yeah. Super valuable. Hmm. Mm. It is tough to answer this. What are you going to do? question mm -hmm. but besides that um, the structure of the uh, education here somehow like uh, opens you up the Finnish art scene a lot mm -hmm. like you, through those studio visits you encounter many artists who are already in field uh, and uh, yeah th this is one thing that I want to emphasize and the other thing is this uh, uh, we are having this professional skills course as a mandatory course and one task of it is to plan next five years which i mm. didn't write yet <laughs> um so like uh, opening you up a space to plan your future and also somehow supporting you on this by uh visiting some uh, finnish institutions how to uh like the institutions that are giving grants or mm, inviting those institutions to um, some portfolio meetings with you is also somehow um, nourishing this after graduation period. Mm. Yeah, they have a lot of opportunities there, like quite uh, the frame, for example, frame, yeah. uh, portfolio meetings. Which yeah, that was uh, we just had that, and there was like an opportunity to frame is if I pronounce it right, like a uh, big. One of the biggest, I think, institutions is as well governing like grants and uh, really big in the system of like Finnish, uh, Finnish art scene. And through that, they invited curators from the field in the Finnish art scene uh, through all over Finland, even from Turku or uh, um, art institutions, uh, really broad. Um, 
and with that sort of you can have sort of your portfolio, um, uh, yeah, like a presentation. Uh, things like this occur quite often, opportunities to sort of present yourself. Uh, and as well, every time you get maybe as well, like uh, this list uh, of open calls. And every mm -hmm. month you get a new list, what, what's current open calls are so completely in sort of the scene, like what is happening around, who is asking for artists to apply. Um, sometimes a bit overloaded how many opportunities there are, uh, which is really luxurious uh, because I didn't experience this before. Yeah. Yeah. Can I also ask, because I'm really interested, because you're um, international students, could you imagine staying in Finland after graduation as well? Like, do you see opportunities here as well mm. now after living here for a while? Yeah. Uh, I do, mm. but the, there are some conditions mm. for this, like uh, already applying or already having a project and then applying it mm. with it to a grant, or mm, maybe sustaining your life uh, by working in a part-time job. Besides that, uh, working or uh, developing your project to apply for further months, mm. even if the residence permit expires uh, a little bit abstract mm -hmm. I answered, but <laughs> yeah. no but yeah, a lot of things to do because uh, for me at least I come from a sort of what is known as a European country so in that case I, I don't have too much struggle there um, so yeah from my experience that, that that makes it a little bit easier what I know uh, if I talk to other students as well that sometimes that's going to be uh, a bit challenging uh, but not not too difficult. Uh, but um, what was I gonna say? That, uh, for example, for the, with the language, the Finnish language, uh, I cannot speak Finnish, and it's quite, I think, uh, quite a, a difficult language. But it, uh, Finland is quite uh, an international country. What I what I've experienced as well in the in the school, as well with courses that are quite many English uh, courses. The same courses as well in Finnish, so it's sometimes in a different semester, but um, I think I at least see myself as well stay in Finland because there's so many opportunities. Um, but yeah, maybe as well you have to get money somewhere, so uh, having a part-time job is something um, without speaking Finnish is maybe sometimes a bit challenging, but uh, it's definitely not impossible. So uh, I hear many people working at a small restaurant. Or, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Besides university, like er everyone, many many people speaks English here. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And also, uh, Finnish policy somehow uh, lets you to stay in Finland e um, if they check this MIGRI FI. Mm -hmm. um, there is also this opportunity if you are a graduate from a degree, um, you are eligible to apply for two years. Uh, length residence permit here mm -hmm. uh, to seek for a job. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 There's another question. Uh, would you mind repeating uh, the features of the printing room? Printmaking? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I, a little rerun of the features of the printmaking room department. So we have all of our studios at the very back. Some of them are individual studios, some are shared. And then there's um, etching, silkscreen, lithography, a letterpress, a paper making room, a lot of book binding, all sorts of like etching and mokohanga. And these are the big words. <laughs> and um, Yeah, I think that's all of it. And then there's this room with all, like all these different types of paper. Which is really incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, one more question. I think also answer to these. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like I had another question, but I forgot it. Maybe, yeah. Is there anything else you want to add or anything else you want to add? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think there's quite a lot of facilities. I, even like uh, mm -hmm. in two years, I um, 
don't even didn't know there was like a painting room uh, with too many like colors. So I think yeah, the tears is a bit too small. I think uh, sometimes for really grasping everything. Yeah. So if you would be even uh, like if you would be accepted, um, yeah, pick your course as well. Uh, that you re really focus on what you want to do because um, there are so many things that could be possible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and really address that as well in application. Uh, sp really specifically, like I really want to follow this. Cannot follow it somewhere else. That uh, that makes it really valid. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Did you want to add? Well, in the end, I would like to say when the results are published. So it's in November, um, the eighth of November, and then of course, um, when do the studies begin? That's in January. So there is not a lot of time, especially when you're a uh, international student. So that's why the university always always also tries to help as much as we can uh, with the process and with all the questions. And if you have any more questions regarding the uh, application process or anything, you can always send us an um, email. And um, please go and check the admission criteria and the how to apply instructions. instructions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One last audience, audience question. What are the possibilities of working with performance and is it possible to move spaces from there? Ah. Oh. Yeah, so the question is what are the possibilities of working with performance and can you book spaces from TAYAC and other academies? I know that from TAYAC that we can book like the dancing spaces I've booked before. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, it's funny, yesterday we had a talk about this, like, uh, it's, it's because there's no departments specifically on performance. But we do have, a, maybe good to mention, um, as well about the culture of uni arts. Uh, we now have a, um, a PAU, uh, Performance Artists Unite group, uh, and now it's sort of making a new event for the second edition. So there's as well things there to explore if you want to explore the performance if next to you, sort of your practice. Or mm. I think there's a few courses, but um, maybe you know it from time to space as well. I don't know if there's... I guess as much as you know, I know the same, but uh, there is this department called Labs Live Art mm -hmm. Performance Studies. So maybe mm, you can check that program. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I've seen a lot of collaborations between like Teak and Siba and Kuva where there's performance, like somebody doing costumes and dance and music and sound and art pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's like a lot of people that do performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, if it's not in the course, then what I know that there's as well events, and you can just join, and if you're interested, and that's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But indeed, like Lops, which you said, uh, is a, a or is a, a program from Teak from Unions. Yeah. But um, yeah, there's even there because it's in the same building. Yeah, they talk mm. to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. I think that that is like the wrap up of everything. Thank you so much for listening and all of your questions. If you have any like more questions that come to mind, then write them to us. And this whole recording will be on YouTube and Instagram if you want to re watch or share with friends. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>